came to adopt. Meeting to order. Once again, we're under executive order to approve point one, temporary suspending the interview public meeting. So join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Have the approval of the minutes from December 1st. Does anyone have any comments or do we accept the motion? I'll move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. We have the CSC CPSC recommendations. Um, there was a correction to them. Are there any questions on that? If not, do we have a motion to accept them as submitted? I'll make that. Second? A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, and again, if anyone wishes to make a uh, public comment, they may do so by emailing the BOE at waltoncsd.org or by calling 607-865-4116, extension 6130. And any comments requiring a response will be addressed at the next regular business meeting. All right, discussion items. The facilities committee meeting um, will be held on January 4th at 5 o'clock. Uh, this meeting will not be open to the public due to um, the content of the leading to the appointment of a, of a firm for selection for construction and professional services. That's the only reason why it's not open to the public. You can't give one firm, you know, if they're watching, an unfair advantage with the other firms if they're not watching. That's why it won't be open to the public. Correct. Right. And um, policy review. You Yep, so we have the attachment is there. Um, you've seen this previously, there's no change to it. This is uh, an adjustment kind of moving forward from uh, some discussions that you had last year um, with it. what I'm proposing um, and the discussion with, with the policy committee and in hearing the discussion from last year is that we call a meeting, we have we have municipal policy services. Anytime we have an update from that, or, or an update from legal counsel, or a uh, any type of compliance issue that comes to our attention, we'll call a meeting and we'll move it through the process, uh, our already established process to a first reading, the second reading is going to go through. Uh, we will continually internally review any policy updates, we'll bring it to to the committee's attention, uh, if it's required, we'll pull our notice. Uh, we'll pull in administrators and any administration supervision for consultation is necessary, um, depending on what comes before us. And then we'll run through the process, disregard will the begin. So if that review process is, is good with the board, if the, if the board approves that, then we'll start, that's when we'll process it, we'll start operating that way kind of how we are operating at this point. Mm -hmm. and, and then each August, beginning of each August, we will take a look um, and build and bring to your attention sometime this year, begin next year, essential policies that we think should be brought forward to the board as key policies throughout the year to keep fresh. Because I think that was part of the discussion Correct. In, in, the, in, in the past. So uh, we'll review that. We'll, we'll discuss it uh, as, as we will even with 
with Robert if we need to as far as mm -hmm. attorney goes, but we'll make sure to have certain policies throughout the year just to refer review, refresh, answer any questions on them, um, and then we can go from there. So if that is a process that you want us to, to go ahead and move to second, the second step, first step, we're good. If you say we're good, we're good, we're ready to move. The second step will be uh, Corey and I beginning the process of building a review uh, of essential policies for next year with the calendar beginning in August. Sound like a plan? You don't need a, a necessarily a vote on that, just a consensus. Just the consensus, yep. Mm -hmm. Is everybody okay with that? Works. Yes. Yeah. Seems a lot uh, less <laughs> labor intensive than what we had planned, for sure. So that makes yep. sense. Yep, and we'll, and we'll, uh, we'll be very thorough and, and transparent with, with what the essential and why. The policies are indicated as essential, as we know. First, so what's the policy book about? Oh, like that. Close. Yeah, it's. Okay. Oh, we get another one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, and we also have um, legal counsel reviewing the sexual harassment policy um, from a, a item that had come up, uh, attachments to the address um, and concern regarding non-employees, such as vendors. Yep. All right. It's not clearly uh, detailed out. It's not. It's, it's missing even in the guidance. And it was something uh, that Graydon had, had asked a question on, and, and so we brought it to their attention, and, and uh, they agree that it is missing. So they're reviewing it. Um, they're reviewing not only that, but the entire process and regulation. So it, it may be more than just an ad. We'll, We'll see what comes back. Mm -hmm. You know, it's one law firm reviewing another law firm. <laughs> so sometimes when that happens, they have different perspectives. And so Corey and I will review that, discuss with them, and bring forward what we feel is appropriate. Right. And with it being non employee, addressing a non employee, that's kind of hard to regulate to begin with. But at least if we have the proper notification out there that yep. we have a sexual harassment yeah. policy in place. Correct. It could be uh, uh, something that we decide. And I should wait to see what he comes with, but it could be that anybody who's working as a vendor, we have uh, a, a document that we give each and every one of them, and they acknowledge receipt right. yes. in order to be a vendor with our organization. Uh, and that's that how we handle it. work is <clears throat> provide the general contractor for say, yep. here's all of our documents. It's now on them to make sure everybody under them under them is right. Right. And, yeah. Yeah, we want understanding the guidelines. You want to protect our employees, right. so you know, everything was internal before. <clears throat> All right. Okay, so correspondence. Um, DCM local sees uh, notice to student families regarding change in instructional calendar. They will be providing remote instruction on December 21st and 22nd. Yeah, remote only. Um, BOCES is a little bit of you know, they're a service organization, so they, they don't have the ability to, uh, unless they do something of this nature, they're there. If we need them, one district needs them, they're open. So they're going to remote so they can take, take care of some care and some issues there as far as their staffing goes and different things. They're under a lot of stress <coughs> all of us. So they requested it and, and uh, we've approved it in the region. Okay. And then our students will just be given stuff to do to keep yep. them? Yep. They've been, the communication has already gone home to, to parents directly from Bosey's. Okay. All right. We are up to the Travel Club. Um, we have presentations this evening by um, the 2020 Travel Club trip to Costa Rica and the 2022 Travel Club proposed trip to Dominican Republic. So as well, do we have, um, do we have Ms. Dieter or Mr. Cutting? With us? Yes, I'm here, Mr. Cutting. Yeah. Right, so I'm here. I'm turn this over to you, and you can decide um, which one you're going to do first and, and, and have the students introduce themselves when it's their turn. Okay, we'll start with the Costa Rica trip. Guys, can you introduce yourself, please? We see them. There we go. Well, I'll kick us off. <laughs> I'm Allison. I went. I'm the secretary of Travel Club, and I had a pretty good time. 
Hi, I'm Emma. I am the vice president and I also had a good time. <laughs> I'm Kendra. Uh, I'm the treasurer. Had a good time. <laughs> There she is. I'm Anthony. I'm the president, and I also did have a great time. So, I'll start the presentation. So, we went to Costa Rica in February, uh, February break before the whole pandemic started. Uh, we were there for about nine days, and it was a lot of fun. So, we actually had to go to Canada to fly out to Costa Rica. So we had a six hour bus ride. So that was fun. We left the school at about 7 a.m. on a Saturday, I believe. On that bus ride, we found out one of our close friends, uh, Isaac Festerfeld, got accepted to BYU, which was really exciting to be a part of. And then we flew out of Toronto, which was cool. I mean, Border Patrol, that was fun. And yeah. So we flew into the capital of San Jose. So it was super cool. We got there really late, so we didn't really get to see anything. But then the next morning we got to take a bus tour of the whole city, which was really cool to kind of just see like how big it was and how many people there were. Um, after that, we did a pineapple farm tour um, where some of us learned that we like pineapple. And um, I don't know if you can see the picture of Allie there. She learned she did not like pineapple that day. Um, we also drove through a national park, which was super cool. Um, we went zip lining. There was 11 different platforms. That was really fun. Um, and then we stopped at a fruit stand on the side of the road. And some of the people played soccer with some of the kids there. So that was just a fun experience. That whole day and little kicking off of the trip definitely was a great time. So then we went to Tortuguero, which is actually its own little island. It's about an hour and a half boat ride just to get there. It's completely cut off and you can stand at one end and pretty much see the other end of the island. And there we had some dance lessons where we thought we were gonna break the hotel floor where we were dancing on. We then did a rainforest tour and there was monkeys above us and everything else and plenty of boat rides. Cause again, you're completely surrounded by water. We then picked up trash on the beach. We were right on the Caribbean, which was really cool. Saw our other group. They were, I would say a little bit younger than us, but they were a lot younger than us. They were about sixth grade, seventh grade. Oh, uh, we watched the sunrise. Me and Emma shared a room and we actually had Dominic and Anthony knock on our door at five in the morning to show us the sunrise that never happened. It, the sun just never really came out that pretty. And then plenty of souvenirs. The people loved us because of course we would buy overpriced souvenirs. And then we went on this rainforest hike and it was stairs after stairs after stairs. But the view was really pretty. It was really worth it. It was really tiring though. But my favorite place, definitely. Then we went to Arenal and there we went kayaking in a 200 foot deep lake at the base of the Arenal volcano, which was really cool actually. And we also did whitewater rafting, which was super, super fun. And then we did some hot springs and that was also cool. And then we did some more stairs. We climbed hundreds of stairs to get to this waterfall. So our last place on the trip was Guanacaste. And it was pretty much just a nice, relaxed last place to be. It had a really cool um, beach that had an amazing sunset, as you can see in the picture. But um, that day before we got there, we took a boat ride and went snorkeling uh, on another um, little island somewhere which was really cool. We got to like be in the ocean and see different creatures. So that was pretty cool. And then of course, a thanks to all of our chaperones. They were a lot of fun. They kept good track of us, didn't let us get in major trouble and made it a really fun time. So thanks again for letting us go. I mean, you guys approved yes. it. So. Thank you. Yeah, we had a good thank time. you. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. 
um, it's nice to see, you know, what you experienced. Um, I have to say I'm a little jealous, <laughs> but it is nice to see that you had such a wonderful time and it's such a great experience. Okay, uh, so yeah, it looks like we're ready. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, the next trip for Dominican Republic for uh, February 2022. Go ahead there, Rick. I was listening, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, so this is a, a similar presentation what we showed the students. Um, we edited it a little bit, um, but just uh, quickly, uh, I'm going to go through some of these things quickly um, and try to focus a little more on what we're actually going to do there. Our itinerary looks like a lot of fun. Uh, so these are all pictures from the Dominican Republic. I mean, it looks just as beautiful as Costa Rica. It looks like really nice compared to outside right now. <laughs> so, um, so 2022, uh, obviously something to look forward to. I mean, the big, the big, of course, what's ever on everybody's mind is COVID. Um, God willing or whoever, uh, we are going to be fine to go there. Um, you know, it's something to look forward to. Hopefully everything's safe there and we can do that. Um, but EF is going to, um, and of course, you know, us as a district, um, but EF is really going to tell us if it's not safe to go there for any reason and will reschedule us for a different country for a different trip. Um, but fingers crossed, um, we'll be, we'll be all set to go to Dominican Republic. And I know a lot of the kids that are already signed up are really excited, um, especially, you know, just with everything going on this winter, uh, definitely something to look forward to. Um, just like last time, payments can be spread out over a long period of time. Um, and uh, the EF has provided a lot more uh, education first. That's a company, of course. Um, EF has implemented a lot of uh, COVID-related refund policies that they didn't used to have, right? Very generous because of uh, COVID. Um, so, of course, EF, uh, they're who we've always gone through. Um, so they've been in the business a long time. I, I believe they're still one of the biggest or the biggest um, uh, companies that do these things for high schools. That's their, that's their focus is for high schools and college. Um, so there's staff internationally, 365 days a year, 50 countries. Um, there's a major office in Panama. So of course that'll be the closest we will be to uh, in Dominican Republic. Uh, so a uh, lot, of course, a lot of schools just in New York use EF. Um, they're definitely uh, the leader in the United States uh, for these tours. Um, safety, of course, is first. Uh, the the best part, I mean, probably the biggest part of the safety is that we have our tour director and usually a bus driver is with us 24, eight or however many days we're there. Um, so, I mean, he or she stays with us, spends a night, the same place we do just a couple of rooms down. Uh, so they're always available. Um, of course, they know all the local authorities if uh, God forbid anything should happen. Um, and of course they can contact 24 seven uh, EF, um, if they need to, they, we can call home whenever we need to. Um, so they try to make sure, of course, safety's first and that uh, safety is the top priority. So as I said, um, you got to click through these ones, Rick. There's, this is an animated page. Thank you. Um, as I said, uh, EF has introduced a lot of uh, programs here, peace of mind program that really puts in a lot more safety nets with COVID, right? Um, I'm sure they lost a lot of business last year. Uh, so they built in a lot of these things to assure their customers, which is us, um, all the students, that uh, nothing like that's gonna happen again, or at least they'll get their money back. 
Um, so we have kid bu the, the kids buy one of two insurance policies um, just on top of that, but the COVID uh, protocols are built in with the price baseline. So if, if for any reason with coronavirus we can't go, um, we'll either be rescheduled for a different country or we'll be refunded. Um, we, within, I believe it's a month and a half or so before the trip. Um, so we, we're pretty close to the dead, uh, pretty close to when we're going to leave. We'll know. Yeah. Um, you know it's we 45 can... days. Okay. Yeah. About a month and a half. Yeah. So I think it, it times out to be um, around uh, winter break, Christmas break of 2021. Right. So, so we'll be going around February break. Um, so we'll be able to make that call by Christmas break before that. So just about a month and a half early. Um, okay. So our itinerary, this is a fun part. Uh, again, all these pictures are from Dominican Republic. I mean, it looks amazing. Uh, we're going to fly into the South coast, um, into Santo Domingo. Uh, and in parentheses, there are the nights. So we're spending two nights in Santo Domingo. We're going to travel north uh, to Jarabacoa for a night. Um, Santiago, I believe, for one night. And then to the north coast, Cabarete for two nights, then back to Santiago for another night. And that's where we're going to fly out of. Um, so in order, here the pictures are some of the highlights of the trip. I, Tracy and I counted... Uh, I think there's, seems like there's 12 or 14 big events we were going to do. It's actually more than we did in Costa Rica. And the price is the same or a little bit cheaper, which is awesome. So this should be a good deal. Um, so top left there is the Trace Ojos Caves. Uh, so, um, you know, some, I mean, looks cool. Uh, whitewater rafting, again, like we did in Costa Rica. The kids really liked white water rafting, and I think we did as chaperones too. It was definitely one of the major highlights, so that'll definitely be fun. Uh, dance lesson there, um, the middle left. Uh, we did some dancing in Costa Rica too, uh, so we're going to learn some, uh, you know, we're, there's a lot of culture built into this trip, where it seems like Costa Rica was some culture, especially with places like Tortuguero, um, but it was kind of a lot of the touristy kind of things where this trip has a lot of culture built into it. There's dance lessons. There's a mini carnival um, we're going to go to later. Uh, and I don't know, there's a couple other things. It looks really neat. Um, middle right there is a cable car ride, essentially like a gondola. Um, we're going to go up the mountain. I believe that's on the North coast. That should be really cool. Um, we're going to go snorkeling again kids and I, chaperones, really like the snorkeling too. Um, it's really cool. Uh, zip lining. Yeah, <laughs> not Miss Dieter. She didn't go snorkeling. <laughs> uh, zip lining tour like we did last time. Kids really like that. And it's not on this, uh, this sheet, but we are going to go surfing too on the North Coast, which we didn't do last time, which should be a lot of fun. I'm not sure if Miss Dieter's doing that one either, but I'll have fun. One other thing that's really interesting in this tour is the kids are going to do a mud, they're going to learn how to build a mud hut yeah. in a little village. So I think that's something that many of them will enjoy. Yeah, there's a, there's a ton of that cultural stuff. And we're going, it wasn't in there either, but we're going to one of the old, um, one of the old colonial forts, stuff like that. So we're going to see a lot of historic sites like that too, I believe. Uh, yeah, so uh, students, I think, all usually come back changed. I mean, um, you know, just getting out of the state, out of the country, out of, you know, the tri-county area um, sometimes makes a big difference, uh, you know, seeing how other cultures uh, work, seeing that most people around the world are like them, even if they speak a different language. Um, people are people, and sometimes you don't I think sometimes you don't get that until you go to another country and you see that. Um, discover more about themselves. A lot of kids come out of their shells on these trips um, because they're in a different country, because their parents aren't around. They kind of open up and blossom um, and try things they would never try 
I'm sure none of a lot of the kids last year would never go zip lining or snorkeling in the ocean or, or things like that. They'd be too scared normally. But when you're in a different country, sometimes it makes you just want to take the plunge. And of course, learning about different cultures, people, places, like I was saying. Uh, group travel. So of course, um, by going as a group, it's more affordable, right? Um, get closer to those people you go with, even though you're in school with them all the time. Um, being in this close-knit group in a different country, uh, a lot of bonding and talking to each other where you know, maybe different cliques wouldn't always talk to each other normally, but when you're the only ones around that speak English, uh, it helps you get together a little bit and get sort of dependent on each other. Uh, so included, of course, the round trip airfare, hotel rooms, um, whether we're in hotels or, or smaller or more quaint places like last time. Um, uh, again, full time 24 eight, I think we're there eight days. So 24, eight tour director. Um, that's like all they do. So they're definitely professionals. The one we had last time was awesome. And uh, last, the last trip to Costa Rica was the only trip I've been on. Um, but she was awesome. I have to imagine she's one of the better ones they've had. Um, of course, education's first in the company name. Um, so definitely education's a big priority you know, safety, education, and adventure, I'd say probably in that order. Uh, we do guided tours, guided things, activities every day, usually multiple things a day. Breakfast and dinner is included every day. Lunch can be on their own, but last time lunch was included every time too, I think all except the ones. So sometimes it's all meals are provided. Um, and of course the 24 seven on tour assistance with the 800 number for parents, uh, things like that, if they need to contact EF. Uh, there's a tour donation page. So students um, help raise their own money. They can set up a little donation page if they need some help. We do some fundraising. We did uh, one already, we sold poinsettias, which is really nice this year. Um, they get a backpack. It seems like a lot of the kids were happy with a backpack last year. And of course, the, the global travel protection plan with all the COVID protocols built in. So things that are not included, of course, kids have to have a passport. Um, shouldn't need a visa, I don't think, but they need a passport. Uh, one bag is included. If people bring more than one bag, I think they have to pay for it or uh, pay for that, excuse me. Uh, spending money, lunches, usually not included. Uh, tips, but usually their fundraising helps cover those tips. We try to get that covered at least. Um, and we don't do the college credit because that's extra money. Um, so there's flexible payment options for, for families. Uh, they can do biweekly, monthly, or they can pay in full um, up to a certain point. We try to convince them to do biweekly or monthly just to spread it out. But I think some of them have paid in full already which is nice. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, there's, again, there's a few things. We don't do all of these things, uh, but we did get an early enrollment discount. Um, all the kids saved another $300 by signing in early. Um, right now, these are our dates. I'm earliest possible. February 17th, 2022 to the 24th. Um, there's a little flexibility in there depending when they can get flights and all that stuff. Uh, we, sh we should be about eight days. Uh, just some more pictures. So the caves around Santo Domingo, the Tres Ojos Caves. Uh, that's the north side, Cayo Arena. And lots of good cultural food. Uh, so I think this is up to date, Tracy. Yeah, 34 yeah. students already, which is more than we had last time already, right? Yep. Yeah, so that's great. Um, we can have up to 50, I think, is the max or something, or close to 45, something in there, Tracy? We, we cut it off at 40 because it's it's a lot. Okay. 
But yeah, if we get to 40, we fill a tour bus and then we don't have to have another group join with us. Right. That'd be nice in a way, but we'll see. And I believe that's it. Yep. Any questions? One point. Doesn't happen. I have okay. one question about the uh, fundraising. You said that you were doing fundraising. How does that come into play if someone has already paid in full? They they can use the money for um, tips, or we at the end we give the money to them, and they can use it for their souvenirs. There's there's a big culture of of uh, tipping down there. I mean, everything we do, we they expect to get tipped for. You know, not just the tour director, bus driver, the, and then all the directors, all the activities we do. So the tips ends up being quite a bit of money and we don't have the kids pay that out of pocket. We sort of collect all that tip money at the, at the beginning. Um, so fundraising usually at least pays for their tips. And if they have a little extra, it can go towards some of their spending money. Yeah, so Miss Dieter carries a lot of money with her because I have to carry all the tip money. Um, if a child doesn't want to do something like zip lining or like what Miss Dieter does, even though you said it brings them out of their shell, and you, Miss Dieter, you sit there with them? Yes. <laughs> I usually, I, I stay back and we walk around or just chat. I'm just saying that there's a kid afraid of heights, you know, but wants to experience everything else. But like you said, it usually brings them out. So that's a good thing, but I we had that they don't. When we went to Costa Rica, we had a few a few kids that didn't do zip lining, so I stayed back with them, but, and Mrs. Rosa stayed back with one that didn't want to do kayaking. Mm -hmm. But usually one of us will stay back. It's usually not many kids, or at least it wasn't last year, just a couple kids, few kids for certain events. Um, but and I was, one of us can always stay back. I was more than happy to stay at the top of the stairs with the ones that didn't want to walk down them. <laughs> does this trip, uh, does this tend to run into any sport conflicts? Um, yeah. Usually basketball. There's you. It's usually um, last last year they came back in time to play in I think a sectional game and they missed one game while we were away. Yeah, I think it usually times out to be sectionals, essentially. So the main season's over, but potentially so, if the team makes it to sectionals. I think we had um, four students that that was a concern that they had. So they bought the um, higher insurance, which means you can cancel up to the day, day of the trip and get your money back, except for the insurance cost. So I know that like four or five students chose to buy the higher insurance for that reason. Is the uh, EF, is this the same company that um, you went through for the Costa Rica trip? Or is this yep. a different, it is? No, okay. this is the same one. It's the one we've used for all of them. Okay, I just didn't recognize the EF from Costa Rica. Yeah. It's actually, the one of the cheaper places I've priced out, but and we haven't had any issues and they're pretty flexible with everything. So when we had the problem with, I think, I think Brett went when we didn't, we were supposed to go to Puerto Rico, then it, the hurricane hit, then yep. we ended up in Panama. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. I guess I've got two kids that have done the travel club and they both have had a ball with it and uh, as a parent going through that process um everything all the i's seem to be dotted and t's were crossed i mean I, that's why i was just checking the name of the firm because i didn't recognize the et and i was for the yeah education yeah. And i was like okay but no i i get a good thing dad i have a backpack that says it so <laughs> come on <laughs> what can i tell you what can i tell you you were hoping she she left the meeting. <laughs> Someone unmuted her. <laughs> I haven't really to the next meeting. I think um, as a 
as a parent, I think it's a wonderful opportunity. I, I could see like some of them being a little nervous sending your children that far away. But I am so excited that here at Walton Central School that we have offered this to our students. And I would like to see in the future maybe um, some scholarships, you know, if people are wondering <coughs> what to do with scholarship for to help some students that may not be able to come up with the funds. My daughter went again when they changed it over and it was, you know, you feel that nerve wracking, but between Miss Dieter and the chaperones, it was Miss Rose at the time. They make you feel so comfortable. And I like mm -hmm. that 24, eight day security that's with them right. at all times. Right. So I didn't worry. I think they, I think that they have a great time. I think that they are less on their device and more into what's going on. It just yeah. seems to be, it does change them. And they had a, they had a, I think it's worth it. It's a great time. Yeah. By the South Bend. Thank, you. Try, Thank you. I tried the, the phones. Most of them, <laughs> they did really well. They would go on when we would get back to the hotel. Right. Because they, and we're in Dominican Republic. There's not going to be much internet, I don't think. Mm -hmm. So. I think, too, when, when you're in the middle of the jungle, there's so much going on that it's like you can't look down because it's just so amazingly different than here, the biodiversity and everything. So it's, you know, they're, they're taking pictures constantly with their phones, um, but it's it's pretty amazing. It's hard not to look up and around. Right, and I think that that's great. It gives them that release, that time away from all of that. So and in that group, like you guys said, you know, all different walks go so it's great yep. absolutely well thank you that was a wonderful presentation very detailed yes thank you thank you, thank you everybody thank you, ladies, gentlemen for the great presentation oh and thank you for approving our trip yeah it's great thank you it should be great <clears throat> that was very good. Um, are there any additions to the agenda? Uh, we do not have any changes to the agenda as it's presented to you tonight, but I would just remind the board that since you received your board packets, we had changed an emergency appointment to a regular appointment on the consent agenda. Great, so we have the consent agenda, we have the financial reports, transfer of funds, we have the approval of the trip of the Dominican Republic. We have personnel appointments, Norm Kirkpatrick uh, to fill a leave uh, replacement bus driver, MJ Connolly, Connolly, is it? F Middle School FFA advisor and Penny Tweedy, volunteer FFA assistant. Are there any questions, concerns on that? If not, do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? I move it. Second? Second it. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Under number nine for new business, uh, we have um, a donation of $50 from Dylan and Sarah Otis to the ABP program in memory of Florence McNeil. Do we have a motion to accept that donation? A moment. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. And then we have the approval of the revised tax collector's report. Um, this was due to um, Town of Tompkins uh, correction. Do we have a motion to accept that? I'll make it. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? And then the um, approval of the correction, corrective action plan. Any comments or questions on that? If not, do we have a motion to accept? I'll make it. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. I think um, Meg had done a wonderful job with that. And then we um, have increased non certified student teacher rate. This is going from 
eighty dollars to ninety. Substitute teachers. Substitute teachers. So, oh, what did I say? Students. Sorry. <laughs> Non-certified <laughs> substitute <laughs> teacher rate. <laughs> and it was eighty dollars a day going to ninety dollars. That would be effective December thirty first. <laughs> Um, and this was due to uh, the New York State minimum wage increase that'll take place. I'll move it. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carry. All right, we are up to administrative remarks. Do we Let me take it? Sure. So we've got the three leadership um, reports as we mentioned last, last month. Um, if there are any any questions or, or any um, detail prior to the meeting, we'll have the, the leaders either come in, zoom in, or give us responses. Uh, they're not here this evening, and I don't have any additional responses, but they, they did a, uh, a thorough job on, on the reports, uh, I, I thought. Uh, the one addition to it is we've just finished our last, our first two days of our first three-day <coughs> three grade level, you know, increased grade level in the buildings. It went well. Um, high school, we were a little bit, we had some contingencies for lunch places with over, with uh, capacity fill, but they didn't need it. Uh, it worked out very well. It was tight, but it worked tight within social distancing, physical distancing parameters, but it worked out well. And um, middle school's not an issue and we'll continue uh, to take a look at it, and, and especially with middle school, um, seeing if there's any uh, additional capacity growth after we get through this for a few weeks and see how, see how it goes. Okay. So we're excited about it. Uh, I'm hearing positive things from, from students, teachers, and hopefully it'll, it'll uh, make a difference with learning and also make a difference with the connection uh, with the students with the teachers. <coughs> so, I agree. You know, a lot of positive stuff. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of positive. Yeah. Everybody's the kids need to be in school. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's good for them. A lot of good positive reinforcement on that. And I, my hat's off to you guys for balancing that because that could not have been easy. You know, you have a lot of schools that aren't even trying to operate anywhere near that capacity. So. Well, you see what they do with the schedule, Absolutely. and you're like, wait a minute, yeah. where's nine ten? <laughs> yeah. um, well, the day we were doing the biggest piece of that puzzle, uh, believe it or not is transportation first and then lunch second right. you, you know classrooms classrooms we know the capacity is there that's easy you know we know that piece of it but those two other pieces and uh yeah you know, like i said middle school we're, we're close we're close we got some transportation things to figure out um we may actually reach out to some some parents on the list to see whether or not they uh for certain buses whether or not there's a few that Maybe they can transport. Maybe they they can help help us out, and, and we'll be able to get additional. Um, maybe we'll get to four days for some of the eighth eventually. So I'm excited about that. But the work that the administrators did with uh, with Tracy and the three building and the two building principals, Amanda was thankful she was over. She didn't have to worry about this one. That was Art and Adam working on this, and it was quite uh, quite the go. Corey witnessed a lot of the conversations. I can't. It, it's nice to be able to get them in a room, start a conversation, and then literally I'm doing this, and they're just figuring out the pieces. And uh, we thought we were, we probably changed half dozen times where we thought we were going, but they figured it out. I, you know, we're, we celebrate the students um, very well here. We recognize the students, definitely, but what Amanda has done with the celebrations for the, for the staff I think that's a, a really good idea. I think it's needed. If yeah. any year, this is the year that that is definitely needed because what they have done, what they're um, trying to accomplish with the teaching and the remote learning, and, um, yeah. like these changes here. Now we're going to go to you know three days and possibly four days. So I, I think that's a very good idea to recognize the staff for everything that they do, um, and also on. Um, Mr. Loomis's report with the uh, area all state music festival students that were um, chosen. Congratulations yeah. to them, <clears throat> and I hope and I hope they are able to perform and you know and do that. Yes, 
I, I was that's I was gonna mention that too to them, like to Anthony and to Emma. Good job, you know, good luck to them if it pursues. If not, they've come a long way. So yeah. I'm I'm hopeful that they'll do at least a virtual concert. Um, as far as the 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 all state and the all county performances, I hope that they do something with that. I think they can. Uh, well, we know they can because look at the New York State School Boards, exactly. the students that did the virtual com concerts. You know, with them being in their homes and it, it sounded wonderful. You know, it sounded amazing. Is so there a way, Dr. Right. McDonald, that if that does go on and you're notified that you could send us out in case there's a link that any of us board members oh, could watch that? Oh, I'd be very curious to watch um, some of our students perform that way. And yep. Well, see if it's a public do. link, we will, we will push that out far and wide, not okay. only internally. Because what an opportunity that would be for community members who yes. don't typically like attend that. unless yeah. they're parents. Right. Yep. You know, it'll be nice. So hopefully they will do that. Um, our virtual high school concert, uh, uh, Rick actually let me uh, hear a little bit of their of their practicing and working through the details of that. I tell you, you can't see a lot because you're in the auditorium, but boy, is that sound rich. I think people are going to be very surprised and impressed. Yep. With, with We're always impressed with the quality of our music program, but the sound coming through for that virtual, you know, you don't know how it's going to come through. But it really, if that was any indication, the little bit, the snippet that I saw, it's going to be a real rich sound. And we kind of may end up being moved because it's playing for, you know, Thursday. We'll see how the weather goes. Oh. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll figure out Sunday. Yeah, good. Yeah. So. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Great. And, and for my end, I just, the only thing I had was mentioning the, the schedule, just giving an update to that little bump. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, and did you have something? Anything? All right. Um, is there going to be a need for executive session? I don't have anything. No. All right. Really? Do I say it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, next month we, we we will next meeting. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Opposed?